What's up everyone? Welcome back to Let's Play Bayonetta and I finally have my new PS3 so hopefully there's no more visual glitches anymore. Also I shouldn't be dropping frames and getting shitty things like audio drift or anything anymore so it's a happy happy day indeed. And anyway in the last episode we finished chapter 9 and played around with a Lute Lieutenant Colonel Kilgore a bit. This episode, we will start Chapter 10 and get into some pretty heavy story elements, some actually more foreshadowing than anything else, but... John? Cereza? The little one? Tentacles? Why did it have to be tentacles? So, Cereza and Jean carved on the bottom of two little statuettes, one of which was indeed uh, Cereza, the little one. Now that is definitely going to be important later on, and this whole chapter is, like I said, pretty heavy on the foreshadowing. So take from that what you will. Also, we're starting out with three lusts, so that's a great way to uh, to get back into the swing of recording. Ah, it's not going that bad. So this is the Umbra Training Ground, uh, which you might recognize as where a vast majority of these flashbacks have been taking place, and where we fought Jean in the beginning of the game, in that also in a flashback. And our purpose here is to rediscover yet more of Bayonetta's lost or sealed memories. This fight's going surprisingly well. The more I, I think it's that the more I talk about how much I hate fighting. Oh god damn it! I realized that a minute ago I called them lusts again. The, I think it, the more I complain about how much I hate fighting joys, the better I do. So I just I should probably just complain about everything. And then this would be prototype two. Uh, fucking that prototype. Let's play. Just gonna ruin some affinities days. 
waltzing me out of tune. Infinities, you don't have shit to say to me today. I'm not even gonna break my stride for you guys. Also, while I'm correcting myself on calling the lusts, uh, or the joys lusts all the time, uh, let me also correct myself on also calling the affinities applauds. Gonna hopefully remember the difference between them from now on, but not gonna make any guarantees. So we're just gonna break down all these walls, which will restore the gears that we then have to spin to get to the next area. But we have plenty to do in this area before that happens. I know of at least one ch no, two chests and an Alfine gate before we even leave this area. So I think we have one more wall over there in the distance. Let's get some halos first, though. Yeah, I think this is the last wall. Wow! I'm missing like a champ! Look at that! It's like every swipe. <laughs> Up here is... Is this a heart or a moon pearl? This... Oh, this is his uh, red hot shot. Oh no, that wasn't the last wall. I thought there was a chest over here. This plaza is another uh, recycled area, and I can't remember exactly where it's recycled from. I think this is also from Chapter 2. We have one more fight, and then we can start turning the crank. They won't just stand still and take the mace hits. Come on, guys, you know I'm just gonna do this to you. Can't escape your fate. Your video game enemies. Of course you're gonna die. Like, this is, this is what your career counselor warned you against when you were going to school. You gotta do well in school or else you're gonna become a disposable video game enemy. No, they just, they just got high every day and didn't go to class. Didn't do their homework either. Homework is super important to not becoming a disposable video game villain. You gotta be the hero. That's why Bayonetta did her homework in school and studied. She got good grades on all her tests. Now she's the protagonist of her own game. So the idea is here to the idea here is to rotate the platform and it will lead off to the critical path, but you can rotate it a bit more and it'll lead to an Alfheim gate. Oh wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, okay, I see. I didn't rotate it enough to lock it in place. So let's just go back and do that again. Let's see, is there anything in the pots? No, there's Absolutely nothing around here. So, churning butter. I know it's a big colossal island and all, but I would really appreciate it if there was just like a little fast forward button here. Cause that's a long animation. So yeah, if you turn it past the obvious path and just go to this island floating by itself here, you have- oh, I forgot this chest was here. Oh, this is the chest with the moon pearl in it. So, does that give us another- yes it does, awesome. So, which Alphine challenge is this? I think this is another- this is either another limited kicks and punches one, or it's another wicked weave one, and we'll find out in just a second. The suspense, it's killing me. Okay, it is Wicked Weaves. So that's pretty easy. 
And against really easy enemies, too. Okay, I'll take a freebie. Ooh, he almost hit me. Almost. Almost. Did. Did hit me. Definitely hit me. Son of a bitch. That was not a part of my plan. Ooh, what are their names, actually? Because while I'm on the topic of remembering the difference between lust and joy, lust not being an enemy in the game, and joy being an enemy that is in the game, and uh, the applauds and the affinities, what are the big egg angels called? Oh, shit. There's decorations and something else. Were they decorations? One of them is. One of them definitely holds that name. Also, I keep popping in and out of panther form here because I'm gonna flip backwards anyway just to put my some distance between myself and the enemies after I've done my combo. So I might as well just double tap that button and go into panther form and get a little extra room to breathe between the combos. Plus, in panther form, I can kind of corral them easier. I can go to one side of the room and then they all bunch up, follow me, and I just sprint around to the other side. And that has two effects. One, it puts, it makes sure that I can't hit a stray one in the middle of a combo and then break the combo that way, like right there. And when they're all bunched up, more of them get hit by that sword sweep. I'm doing the punch kick punch because the sword sweep is a pretty wide range attack and because it's just three buttons as opposed to a lengthier one. So it's just easier to get the wicked weave out that way. I, there's, I think there are more damaging wicked weaves, but this one, it's, I think this is the easiest way to abuse this alpine. So yeah, you just double tap the trigger, pop into panther form, get back a little bit, and keep repeating punch kick punch. The only annoying thing is if you're close to an enemy and you do that second hit, the kick, it lunges you forward a fair bit. So you have to make sure you don't hit an enemy and interrupt the combo. But otherwise... Alphine, those Alfheim challenges are very, very easy. The enemies can't do in, do anything about you using that tactic, so... The only drawback is that you won't get a super high combo score. But since we're not going for super high combo scores, or we're not really going for uh, medals in this playthrough, it's not a big deal. The only reason I could see going for medals, at least personally, would be to unlock Jean. And I already have a separate uh, save file just for, for metal whoring. Because I'm absolutely not capable of focusing enough to get plats and pure plats while uh, giving you guys fun little information and play-by-play. -play. Okay, so now we can move on to the next part of the level. Just have to sit through this lengthy loading animation. Come on! Turn it as fast as I can. Okay. So if you remember, a couple times I brought up um, the headaches the developers had streaming all the data, especially once Panther Form got introduced. And I talked about how they came up with some creative ways to solve their issues. When you jump to this new island here, that one that we were just on, it floats away in the distance if you turn the camera around. And it's pretty much just memory management at that point. Because unfortunately, the PS3 has... The PS3 and the 360 have 512 megs of RAM. And that might be a good topic to get more into 
in a bit. But for now, I think we have a couple refights coming up. And pure platinum on the stingrays. Cool. Yeah, that's just one of the ways they solve some of their issues is having uh, previous areas more or less disappear completely. <laughs> and this guy is Courage. He is a pallet swapped weaker version of Fortitudo. And we're also going to be fighting Temperance, who is the pallet swap for uh, the pallet swap refight for Temperantia. Or Temperantia! Sure! Love your song. Stop it, Fortitudo. It's love your song. <laughs> oh, fuck. I call him Fortitudo. Whatever. I, I will never have named straight. Let's just establish this. 20 whatever episodes into this let's play. I will never ever have name straight. And yet somehow in Banjo Kazooie I will have name straight. Ain't that a bitch? Oh, Temperance, you are a punk. So the messed up thing about these refights is that they aren't just lower ranking underlings that are subordinate to the, the Cardinal Virtue Angels. Kamiya explains this as they're also supposed to be decoys for the Cardinal Virtues, for the, uh, the main Audicio. Which, it, they're the worst decoys ever. They're showing up several chapters after their counterparts, after their higher-ups have died. That's like revealing Kennedy at a body double after he's been shot. Oh no, oh no, you didn't, Mr. Tentacle Man. You ain't gonna lay the me. I ain't gonna stand for it. Come on, I just want you to slam your fist into the ground. That's all I want you to do. Uh, that works too. Well, it would have worked if you had kept your head down. Now you are. That's fine. We can work this out. We can work, it. We can work this out, Temperance. We can work our differences out. You know, I'll agree to meet you on Mori. We'll get a, we'll get a DNA test to see who the father is. It'll all work out just fine. Everything that goes on Mori works out just fine. Right? Um... Let's go ahead and start wrapping this episode up. Oh god, hey! Yeah, that's not, um... That's not... Temperentia's... Creepy snake neck. That is actually... The next boss we're gonna be fighting, Listitia. But, that's for another episode. A far... Farther in the future episode. For now, though, thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy, have a good one.